Well, thank you for being here tonight. What I'm going to do is just share a couple of thoughts just to accentuate and kind of bring focus on what Tim said tonight. Why is loving other people, looking for opportunities to share into their lives, why is this so important to God? Because, you see, isn't that the central question? It's certainly important to me. It's important to you. But the question really is, what is God after in all of this? What is his purpose in using us as the instruments of his Holy Spirit to be looking for opportunities to enter a person's life, to influence, to speak into, to encourage, hopefully for the purpose that God will use what we say, and not only what we say, but more than anything else, how we say it, who we are to that person is going to be the message of God's love. How many of us have ever been around a person and when you are with that person, you feel the defenses of your life? You know how we are careful to what, you know, we have guards up. Most of us do that. And so you're with this person and the person begins to say, what's the matter with you? Why are you like that? How many of us are drawn to that person? What's the problem? Because you see, that person isn't saying to us, I care about you. He may care about you, but that's not the message. And so you go to another person, you have another encounter. And that person senses the same reticence, the same resistance, the same reluctance, once you're at a distance. But then in this person, you begin to experience care. You begin to feel comfortable with this person. You begin to feel safe. And what does that do to you? As you begin to feel the person's care, experience this care, and begin to feel comfortable, you feel the guards of your heart do what? Begin to go down. And then you begin to feel safe. Yet we're talking about being used by the Holy Spirit as instruments of the Holy Spirit that we can be used in a way that God will use us as His love to His people for the purpose of transforming them and us into the image of God's Son. And these three elements, I believe, are crucial or essential for people to be able to open the door, the entry gate of their hearts to you, to us, in order to receive what the Holy Spirit has for them in relation to their need. You remember these words of Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28? Somebody remember what he says? Come unto me, 
All you who what? Labor and are heavy laden, are burdened. And I'm going to give you rest. Come to me. And so how did he encourage people to come to him? Did they come to him just because he said, come to me? Well, some may have. But what was it about this man, this man, that they experienced? Which when they were in his presence, when they were with him, when they watched him, when they saw him, what was it about them that drew out of them frustration and anger and fear, et cetera, et cetera. Because you see, the love of God is, do you remember what a compress is? Amanda, do you know what a compress is? Hmm? You don't? Oh, okay. You have a sore or something infected on your arm. And so the doctor gives you this gooky stuff. And you put it on the sore and put a bandage over it. And what's the purpose of that, Glenn? To do what to the poison? To draw it out. To draw it out. How many of us, and you may raise your hand if you have experienced this. How many of us have literally felt the things or the poison in us. Could I say it that way? Do you understand? The poison in us. Drawn out of us. By Jesus. How many of us have ever experienced that? What drew it out? Romans 2.4 tells you. What does Romans 2.4 say? Someone know that verse? Paul is saying to the Romans, don't you know that it is the, and he takes the Hebrew word has said, you mentioned that, I think Sunday. And he says, the goodness, the loving kindness. Don't you know it's the goodness of God that leads to what? Repentance. Now we often think repentance. Yeah, we need to repent, change your mind, stop that. But repentance can also be considered as what is happening in my heart as I experience this love of God, as I experience Jesus' kindness when I should not have experienced it because of what I've just done. His patience when I've just done the same thing 15 times this week. His gentleness. I remember a lady came to the office years ago. And her son at that time was probably 15 or 16. And she was really exasperated with him. Because he had been wrestling with and against drug addiction. You know, he would succeed and then fall back. You understand. I think many of you know the cycle. And so he was back under the influence. You see, we're talking about how to befriend, how to become involved with, how to be used by the Spirit of God to open the heart of of others so they can experience the transforming work of the Holy Spirit. What should I do? How should I behave? So we talked about it. Now, this isn't a panacea. Do you know what a panacea means? You take one pill and everything's solved. This is not a panacea. But it is important to remember because often... We don't remember this in the midst of frustration, impatience. This is the 15th time this week, etc. And I said, do you have any vines 
uh, you know, a trellis, isn't that the wood thing you put it on, the vine grows? I'm not much of a gardener. Do all of you know what I'm talking about? The little vine grows this and that and the other day. Now, how many of you know this, that when you have the vine and you want it to go this way, that if you leave it alone for a few days, which way is it going? It's going its own way. It ain't going your way. Because you see, a vine, believe it or not, has a mind of its own. Jeremy, you didn't know that, did you? These things have a mind of their own. Just don't do the garden for about two weeks and you'll find out. And I said, how do you get the vine to go in the right way, Austin? How would you do it? It's over here. It's okay if I talk to you. It's okay. This is Carly's new husband, Austin. I mean, how old are you? He's new for 29, isn't he? And did I embarrass you? We, we've seen you before. It's okay. It's okay. How, how, that's your son-in-law. Be ready. 50, 60 years of this. Hopefully the Lord will give you that far. How do you get the vine to change its direction? You yank that thing off and yell at it and get upset. And that's a fifth time. And I'm shoving you back in there. And the result of it is you're holding the vine in your hand. You've just uprooted it, Brian. How do we deal with others in such a way that they will want us to be used in their lives. They will literally begin to want to be with us. See, this is a struggle for pastors. And the answer, as Tim said tonight, is not a mechanical thing. The answer is this. We must regularly ask, be sensitive to, believe and receive what the Holy Spirit tells us. If you will make the Holy Spirit the one who actually is the transforming power of God in the lives of others. He is the one, correct? I wouldn't transform anybody except in their own direction. I have a gift for that, <laughs> for doing it wrong. Some of the elders would tell you that. I have a gift, right, Frank? <laughs> you didn't have to shake your head that much, brother. So, the Holy Spirit is the centerpiece. He is the one who is making real in me, to me, and through me. He is making real the love of the Lord Jesus. And when I, as a human being, when you... And when we, as human beings, are loving others with the same love with which Jesus loves us. Because his love is now in me, in you, if you have the Holy Spirit. Do you believe that? And as we move in that direction and obey the Lord, and as we love others... They are literally experiencing the love of this man inside of them. And that love in them will, by the power of the Spirit, begin and continue and develop the transforming work of God so that they are becoming more and more conformed to the image of God's Son. Remember what Romans 8.29 says. Therefore, they are being more and more conformed by the Holy Spirit into 
people in whose lives the love of the Lord Jesus is developing more and more. Our hearts are either locked against God, but are opened by the Holy Spirit when he comes into us and invades us and gives us a new heart, the heart of God's love. And that heart of God's love is a continuing work of the Holy Spirit. But he uses us as the primary instruments. And so, do any of you know, folks, that you know, whether they're saved or not, you know are in great need of a greater work of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we do. So how do you do this? You care for them. You're patient with them. You encourage them. You're kind to them. You're gentle with them. And when they experience that, that heart begins to say, I want to be with that person. How many of you have had that experience? One more question before I end. How many of you ladies are married? Carly, raise your hand for goodness sakes. How many of you married? That, aren't more of you married than that, you ladies? Why did you marry your husband? I hope it's not the wrong answer. <laughs> Keith Gonzalez is over here. Uh-oh. No. <laughs> what happened was he wooed your heart with his love. Do you remember that? Crystal, do you remember that? You don't? You do remember that. <laughs> he wooed your heart with his love. And he began to draw your affections your delight, your desire to be with him. Right, Donna? He began, oh, I'm looking at Donna, I'm not looking at, uh, what, what's your name? Mar Martha. He began, to, he began to draw you to himself. Is this true? It was his love. This is who we are to be to one another to the world preeminently that when they come knowing us they should be able to walk away and say this you know I don't know a lot about that person's background whatever but I know this I experienced God's love in that person and I can't wait to be back with that person in another meeting, in another situation. That's what we're called to be. We're instruments of God's Holy Spirit to proclaim His love into their lives through the way we are to them. Not looking at them as projects, but looking at them as children of God. And this is the way God is honored. Because then his love is manifested and he is shown to be glorious because his love is a glory to experience, isn't it? This evening, the table talk, we have two sessions, I think of 15 minutes each. And so what we'll do is go ahead with that. And somewhere around 8 o'clock or somewhere around there, I'll come up and just give us like a little bell, whatever, and then you finish or you continue whatever you want to do. Thank you so much.